This battle between C# -sharp and GD Script is pointless, especially for us as beginner game devs. They each have their own place when making games. And with Godot 4's more streamlined approach to C# -sharp implementation, it's safe to say that you game devs who've been longing for an open source approach to game development, looking at you Unity users, should just stop wasting your time. Okay, I know that statement was a bit harsh and uncalled for. The choice between GDScript and c -sharp depends on various factors, such as the target platform, the project requirements, your personal preferences, and the existing ecosystem and frameworks being used at the time. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the information that I've found regarding the use of c -sharp and GDScript in Godot 4. And keep this in mind, the opinions can get a little bit spicy. And also, this is just my opinion and my interpretation of the facts that I've found. So feel free to leave your own comments and views below. Welcome back to Diragu Games. Of course, there are many reasons for choosing one or the other, but let's look at these three key points. Language design, memory management, and IDE. Integrated development environment which is simply a software application that helps programmers develop software code effectively. First, let's look at language design. GDScript is a loosely typed or dynamically typed scripting language, depending on who you ask. More on that later. But what they all agree on is that it's designed especially for the Godot game engine. Think of it as a language made for writing instructions specifically that only Godot can understand and execute. It has been designed to be easy to learn, especially for beginners who are new to programming. Wait, I know what you're thinking. What did he just say there about beginners? Okay, let's look at it this way. In terms of syntax, GDScript has a simpler structure compared to C-sharp. It also has a smaller set of rules and keywords, making it easier for beginners to grasp. It's like learning a simpler language, with fewer words and grammar rules, making it more accessible for someone just starting out. An easy comparison would be to compare the English alphabet to the Hawaiian alphabet. The Hawaiian alphabet has 13 letters and 7 diphthongs. In addition, the letters F, G, S, Y, and Z are used to spell foreign words. The English alphabet just consists of 26 letters. Now I'm not implying that Hawaiian is easier to learn than English in any way. And I'm also not saying that English is the harder language to learn. In Hawaiian we say aoi hana nui ke ia, which means no task is too big when done all together. Now what does this mean to a beginner? Firstly ask yourself this. Do you want to learn programming? Or do you want to learn to make games? There's a very thin line here. Godot's approach to game dev and learning code is very biased towards the Godot game engine. And if you want to learn programming, then GDScript is not going to teach you those sets of rules. Well, at least not in the conventional sense. In my experience, learning GDScript teaches you how to call and use a set of pre-made methods used by the Godot game engine. And trust me, if all you want to do is make games, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Don't just take my word for it. Let's hear what Nathan over at GDQuest has to say about this. As always, there are links to everything I talk about in the description. And to code any game idea you have, you need programming foundations. Precisely, you need to learn to think like a programmer, an essential skill that includes creative problem solving. And so if you jump into it unprepared, as with any game engine, you're going to hit tough obstacles and get frustrated. The way you get past that is by working on your programming foundations following a good course. Harvard has an open courseware called CS50. It will teach you how to think like a programmer. On the other hand, c -sharp is a general purpose programming language developed by Microsoft. It's not tied to any specific game engine or application so it can be used for a wide range of purposes beyond game development. c -sharp is used in various industries, such as building desktop applications, web development, and even mobile app development. And now c -sharp is even more accessible and easy to use in the Godot 4 game engine than ever before. And we still have the option of using those Godot methods using c -sharp. 
Earlier, I mentioned that GDScript is a loosely typed or dynamically typed scripting language. That is the little debate, but the exact definition really does not matter to us beginners. However, in simple terms, what does matter is when you create a variable in GDScript, you don't have to explicitly specify what type of data that variable will hold, like you would have to in c -sharp. You can assign different types of values to the same variable throughout the program's execution. Don't you just love the flexibility of FAR? It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. It keeps you on your toes, constantly guessing what type of data you're dealing with. And who needs type safety when you can have a delightful surprise every time you try to figure out, hmm, what type of data was this variable? In contrast, strongly typed languages like c -sharp require variables to have their data types explicitly declared before using them. Once the type is specified, it cannot be changed during runtime. I know, that's too mundane, right? And now on to memory management. In programming, memory management refers to the process of allocating and releasing memory for storing data during the execution of a program. It's similar to having a backpack that you can keep your belongings in while you're on a trip. If all the compartments are filled, you have to decide what items are essential and remove those that are not to make room for new things that you may acquire. Memory is freed up by a built-in process called garbage collection. It automatically identifies and frees up memory that is no longer needed. In GDScript, garbage collection is handled automatically by the language runtime. When you create objects or variables in GDScript, the runtime keeps track of their usage and determines when they are no longer needed. Once an object or variable is no longer referenced or used by the program, it automatically frees up the associated memory, which can then be reused by other parts of the program. This makes it easier for developers to focus on writing code and not worry too much about memory-related details. c -sharp garbage collection is also automatic, but the process is handled by a more sophisticated garbage collection algorithm called the generational garbage collector. It divides objects into different generations based on their age. Not all objects have the same lifespan or usage patterns. Some objects may become garbage that's no longer needed quickly, while others may live longer and remain in use for a considerable period. This gives c -sharp more flexibility and control over garbage collection, which then becomes the responsibility of you, the developer, who can fine-tune various aspects of the garbage collector to optimize memory usage and performance for specific scenarios. And lastly, let's talk about the IDE. An integrated development environment is a software application that provides a comprehensive environment for developers to write, debug, and manage their code. It offers features like code editing being the most obvious, syntax highlighting, code auto-completion, debugging tools, and project management capabilities. IDEs make the process of writing and maintaining code more efficient and productive. For GDScript, the primary IDE is in the Godot editor itself. The Godot editor is a specialized environment specifically designed for game development using the Godot engine. It integrates seamlessly with GDScript and provides a range of tools and features tailored for game development within the Godot environment. The Godot Editor's code editor supports all the features of a standalone IDE, but it's designed for GDScript code, making it easier to write and debug scripts. While we're on this topic, can we talk about GDScript's use of indents? You're so clever, GDScript, forcing me to meticulously align my code blocks to make everything work. One miss space and boom, syntax error. It's like walking on eggshells, not trying to upset anyone. But I swear, sometimes I feel like I'm indenting more than I'm actually coding. But seriously, GDScript also inherited Python's affinity for simplicity. It embraces a minimalist approach with clean and readable code. Less is more, they say. And indentation is crucial in GDScript because it determines the code structure and helps the interpreter understand the relationships between different code blocks. 
Correct indentation ensures that code is well organized, readable, and most importantly, functions as intended. C Sharp, on the other hand, benefits from a broader range of IDE options, with Visual Studio being a popular choice, offering extensive features and tools for C Sharp development. However, at the time of making this video, it does take some tinkering to get the IDE working in Godot. I've listed a couple great resources for integrating C Sharp into your workflow if that's something you've been wanting to do. But as I mentioned before, GDScript is tightly integrated within the Godot editor, a specialized IDE for game development within the Godot game engine. If you've got here, you've made it to the end, and I say stop wasting time and just make games. Whether you choose GDScript or C Sharp, they both have their pros and cons. And remember, there are links to everything we discussed in the description. Thanks for watching, and let's continue to build and explore these worlds one pixel at a time.